Hi, I'm Hector Garcia. I'm an accountant and I really, really love uh, Microsoft Excel. I use it pretty much every day. Now this year, I'm particularly excited about Microsoft Excel 2016. There was a, new, a few new features added to Microsoft Excel 2016, specifically in the areas of pivot tables. I love pivot tables and I'm gonna go ahead and show you how pivot tables work. And I'm gonna specifically point out the new features added in 2016 as well. So I'm working with a basic uh, data set here. I actually exported this data from uh, QuickBooks, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and create a pivot table in Excel. Now a pivot table can be best defined as a way of taking a whole bunch of information, uh, line items, transactions that have multiple columns or multiple dimensions of data and giving you the ability to create a report or a table that can summarize or group them in any, any logical fashion you see fit. For example, let me go ahead and select this entire data set here. I'm just gonna hit Control A on the keyboard, which will grab all the data set here, and then click on Insert, Insert uh, Pivot Table. Now, there's a shortcut for pivot tables, which is basically Alt N V. So you can click the button or do the shortcut, whatever you want. Let me go ahead and hit OK. And it's going to create a new sheet in which I can build my pivot table. Now, you're going to see four uh, areas here in which you can drag information. So these are going to be base pivot table functions. If you've done pivot tables in the past, this stuff is you already know. But, um, but if you haven't seen them, this will be really interesting to see. I will get to the uh, new features a little bit later on in the video. So the way I can group my transactions is I can grab maybe transaction type, customer name, and then amount, and then group that information together. So I'm just gonna grab transaction type, put it on the rows, and then grab customer, put it on the rows, and then grab amount and put it on their values. So basically it's going to group my transactions, in this case by type, and then by customer. And I could simply just uh, right click here and collapse and just group it by the sort of the top, the top category. And I can individually click on any of these and I can drill down even further. Now what's nice about this is I can, under invoice and under customer, drill down even more. Maybe I can grab the item and put that under customer. And you're gonna see that we keep drilling down in layers, under layers, and there's no limit. Um, we can grab split also and put that under. And so there are no limits. I can, I can go as deep as I want to, and it will total or group or summarize that information uh, for me. Now, let me go ahead and clean this up a little bit. I'll take item out of the way, take split out of the way, and take type out of the way, and we just stay here with customer. Now, I'm gonna show you the new feature in Excel 2016, which is working with multiple tables and automatically detecting um, fields that have relationships from other tables. So for example, I have a different table here under customer that has the customer's name, the city, the state, and the customer type. But this information is not in my transactions table. In my transactions table, I just have the customer name. So in order for me to get that information, city, state, customer type, into the transactions table, I would have to create a VLOOKUP formula, bring that data in there, it's just really messy and takes a very long time. But with this uh, new data model feature in Excel 2013 actually, but you're gonna see some improvements in 2016, we can create multiple tables and drag that information in. So let me show you what I mean by that and how that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this uh, pivot table and kind of start from scratch here. There's my transactions table. Let me go ahead and select all. And then I'm gonna create a table. Now in Excel, there's an actual function called table, which labels the data set. Um, it gives it boundaries, it gives it formatting, and it gives it a name, and it makes it a much, much easier way to manipulate and work with. So let me go ahead and click on table. I could also do control T, or I can click on table and that icon up here, whatever you want, control T and then hit okay, and then I'll create a table. You notice right away because of the formatting, and then really important up here, top left, table name, 
Give it a name that you will understand when you're working with it on the pivot table. So we'll call this one uh, transactions. Then I'm going to go over to my customer table, do the same thing, control A to select all, control T to create the table, hit OK, and then give this a name. We'll call it uh, customers. So now I got two tables, my transactions table and my customers table. So let me start by creating that pivot table. Alt N V. There's my new pivot table. Really important down here, it says add this data to data model. So data model means we're going to analyze multiple tables and build relationships between them. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Then my new pivot table gets created. But now um, Excel knows or understands that I'm probably going to grab information from multiple tables. And that's why I'm going to have a little all button here where I can grab other tables from. So this other table here called customers, which contains this additional information that I want to include in my pivot table, um, it's going to be here under all. So to make this easier, I'm going to right click on it and click show inactive tab and much easier to work with. So let me go ahead and click on transactions. Let me bring in my customer name here under rows, and then I'm going to bring in the amount under values. Now, I want to also pivot this information by maybe the state and the city as well. So what I'm going to do is from my customers table, I'm going to go ahead and grab the state, bring this down onto rows. Okay. And notice I get this big uh, yellow arrow here, here saying there's no relationships in the tables. You better create them. Now, just to show you real quick before I do that, let me go ahead and collapse my fields and show you that I have basically the same information. And that that's basically an error because uh, there's no tables uh, being built. Now I can manually create my relationship by clicking on create and then building my relationship basically by telling it from my transactions table, go ahead and find the customer field. And then from my related table called customers, also use the customer field and then hit OK. And that's going to create the relationship. That is the manual way to create the relationships. In Excel 2016, they added this really awesome out of the tech button that when you click on it, Excel does a, this you know, interfacial intelligence type of analysis and try to figure out what fields are in common between the tables and it will find that relationship for you. That way you don't have to manually select those fields. So there we go. Now you see these two different, totally different totals. So then I can just keep pivoting and, and mix the two tables. So I can go by city afterwards. And then you see uh, state, city. Let me go ahead and expand these. So we get to see exactly what's happening. So we got state, we got city, we got customer name, and then we can grab customer type if we want to also, or maybe we can grab some information from the other field here and we can sort of mix and match. So that's a really cool thing about working with multiple tables. You can sort of mix and match fields um, across both tables as long as there's a relationship on it. Okay, let me go ahead and delete that um, so I can show you the other new feature of Excel 2016, which is automatic grouping of dates. Now this is huge because most of the times when we're grouping uh, or, or summarizing information in pivot tables and there's dates involved, we have to manually tell it, okay, group it by month, group it by quarter, that sort of thing. Now, Excel 2016 automatically knows or assumes that if you're working with dates, you want to group them. So let me show you. Let me click on pivot table, hit OK, and then I'm going to grab date, date as my row. Now, notice something that will happen really interesting automatically it gets grouped by year. Now that's new in Excel 2016. So let me go ahead and click on amount. And now we see it grouped by year. Now notice that sort of new fields get created, quarters and years get created. And then we still have date, which date is basically month. Um, I don't know why it does that, but that's how it does it. So my date becomes my month now. And then this new fields get automatically created for quarter and year. So I can actually expand any of these 
and I'm gonna see them grouped by quarter, and then I can expand any of these, and then I'll see it again group by month. Now, I can get rid of that grouping by right-clicking on that area and click ungroup, and that would get rid of the grouping and show me just the raw dates. And by the way, that's how Excel 2013, uh, 10, 07, 03, that's how it worked by default. If you we were putting a date in a row, it would just put the raw date in it. And you would have to create that grouping manually. If you're working with an uh, older version of Excel, to do the, group, the, the grouping, you would just right click, click on group, and then you would basically uh, select you know, from your date range and then say, yeah, I want you to group by year and by month. And you basically select or deselect the ones that you want to group. So I just want to select month and years. So I just select those two over there and then I hit OK. And then it creates that grouping for me. So the manual grouping has always been available, but that automatic grouping was added in Excel uh, 2016, which is really, really exciting. So I hope you like this video. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you want me to make more Excel videos. Uh, hit like and add some additional comments. What would you like me to do?